Hello everybody, I'm Derek and welcome back to Kerbal Space Program. So I was looking at our last mission and what I realized was we did that entire moon flyby and I forgot to use the Science Junior. If we go look in the uh, vehicle assembly building at our ship, this guy right here. Totally forgot to do the science from it and that's a pretty high science item so we are definitely going to be going back to get that science later. But what this convinced me was that I need to get the mod that allows us to uh, see what science we've done and what science we can do at any given time. So this will be helpful while we're flying the missions to tell us if there's science available and I don't have to go click on every single uh, different science experiment that I've hidden in the ship. So that will be kind of nice. Until then though, let's take a look at our contracts. We've still got uh, orbital rendezvous around Kerbin. We've got all the time in the world to do that though, so we're not in any hurry there. So we got to test this parachute. It wants us to be between 3,000 meters and 11,000 meters at 70 to 190 meters per second. So I think we can do that pretty easily. Mm -hmm. We'll probably we're probably just going to conduct a or, or make a little ship that'll just do this. It'll fly up, get those conditions, and then uh, parachute. So. Let's make a new ship. Let's take a look at that contract. It's the Mark 16 parachute. Okay. And I'm pretty sure that that is this guy. Yep. Mark 16 parachute. I'll zoom in here a little bit. If you hold shift while you use the mouse wheel instead of going up and down, it'll go in and out for you. That's the Mark 16 jumbo parachute. Alright, and then down here we will uh, hook up engine. We're going to need more engine than that, though. Or more fuel than that. In fact, we might be able to use a terrier. Oh, no, the terrier's got terrible, terrible thrust in, in atmosphere. Just abysmal. What is this guy's actually not too bad. I don't know if we did two of those. 1,500 meters per second and a four thrust to weight ratio. That should be sufficient. So for utility, I'm going to go ahead and throw uh, two more drogue chutes on here, just to make sure that we don't blow anything up. Although those engines should be reasonably tough, uh, yeah, seven meter per second impact. So we should be all right. And we'll check our staging here. Make sure the drogues can deploy first. Um, but in this case, we actually don't want the drogues to deploy first. We're going to want this to deploy first because. We're going to use it. Test craft one is what we'll call this. And the only reason we're doing the normal parachute first is we want to hit those requirements that they've made for us. So let's go ahead and save that. Since we've got that much parachuting on it, we'll go ahead and throw a material science bay on there. Still 1400 meters per second at delta V. Hopefully that'll be enough. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to open up this contract so when all of these are met, that thing should light up and tell us. Uh, but until then, let's, let's throttle this back a little bit. So maximum speed is only 190 meters per second, so we don't want to be going that fast. We're now flying, so I'm going to go ahead and observe the material bay grab us a little bit of science. Our altitude's not high enough. There we go. Altitude, everything's good. Deploy that parachute. Bingo. Now, of course, it's always rather silly to deploy a parachute when you're going still up, but, yeah, whatever. And yeah, we'll get that crew report while we're at it. Now that we're going down, drogues. We've used very little of our fuel, so we'll use some of it to uh, just burn some of it up here. Because if we keep all that fuel, we might not be able to land very easily. Because we're going to be way too heavy with all that fuel. So we'll see about burning some of that up. But we also don't want to make the ship start going backwards. So let's just point this direction. 
all started going back up again. That's certainly not what we want. This is definitely going to be a weird descent. But it got us 22,000 bucks in three science, so it'll be alright. And at this point, we're just going to burn off some of this fuel so we're not too heavy. Once we get real low on fuel, we can use it to kind of power stop ourselves once we get to the ground, you know? Yeah. Just give a little fuel to it. But this is a lot of fuel right now. Then again, we got plenty of Delta V, so let's do this. Let's just go. Just do it. We don't have all day, right? We should be seeing that big parachute deploy pretty soon, you know, because we're coming down on some fairly shallow ground here. And see, we would impact at around 10 meters per second right now, so just before we hit the ground, we'll turn those engines on and level ourselves out a little, lower our speed. And that, that evens us at 8. It's already better. Just before we hit the ground, we'll want to do this. Now we got to be a little careful because we don't want to bounce off the ground because our parachutes are going to disappear as soon as we touch the ground. So we want to kill our engines right as that happens as well. So 3 meters per second. Can't ask for better than that. There we go. Oh, and then we fall over. But we're good. And I lied, the parachutes didn't disappear immediately. But close enough. Let's go ahead and EVA him. I don't think we have an EVA report from the shores. Actually, let's look at our thing here. What does this say? Yeah, it says EVA report. And if we take that data and then board, we need a crew report from here. There. Yeah, see that thing? This thing's pretty nice. Let me put that up there. There we go, that should be a pretty cheap flight. We landed very close to the KSC. So other than the price of the fuel, we won't have paid too much. We got 25 science, not too bad. Yep, 97% back. Not too bad either. He didn't get any experience because he's done bigger and better oh, things than that. Man. But that knocked out that contract for us. So our next one's gonna be science data from the service, science data from around the moon, and plant a flag. Now we could do all those in one if we do a manned mission to the moon. But I think we may we may send a probe to the moon, just just for fun. Let's see, we did unlock solar panels and everything, so yeah, let's let's do an unmanned probe mission to the moon. That should be a good time. And that saves us a little bit on Delta V, because we don't have to worry about bringing it home. Okay, so that's not a very big probe core. Which means just this engine combination has a 5 thrust to weight ratio. Let's give it a slightly bigger fuel tank. And this might be the base of our lander here. Looks like we've got... We could probably use the micro landing struts for this thing. There we go. Wow, those things are... Those things are uh, pretty... <laughs> Pretty heavy already. Let's do our move tool and just move them down a little more. Just to make sure that we don't accidentally, you know, crash the engine into the ground or something. Not that it will matter that much if we do, because we don't need it to come back. So maybe we just go back to the normal placement of these. <laughs> yeah, that should be alright. Because if the engine does blow up, it's not the end of the world. Put some solar panels on there. A battery on there. We're definitely going to want some kind of antenna for this one. We'll use this. Uh, I don't think we need three of them, though. Let's see if we do... Yeah, that looks pretty good. Especially if we uh, extend it. Yeah, it looks, looks like they're sharing the, the pole there. That, we might actually leave them extended so that it's not quite so wide. We'll retract that. And see, this has got over two kilometers per second at Delta V. That's, that's pretty ridiculous. 
definitely throw one of these guys on here. And one of these guys on here. And I think we'll do two of those. We're not going to take a, a materials bay because that's a little bit heavy. This thing's got plenty of thrust weight, plenty of fuel. Plus, at the angle they're at, they're not gonna, they're not, you know, they're not gonna be perfect or anything. Although that's a decent battery, maybe 200 electric charge. Right, so let's uh, get a fairing on this thing. The most fun part of any mission is designing this fairing. sticking out of the fairing, so that's good. We're not clipping through it anywhere. Which can be known to happen. Alright, we're just going to speed up this craft design a little bit and uh, get this moving along. So, uh, back to the rest of the video. So that's a, it's not a bad looking rocket. It's not going to be called Test Craft 1. Uh, this will be, well, we can't call it the Kerman. The Ker Kerbnik, maybe? A combination of Sputnik and Kerbal. I really am bad at making up these names. If you guys have any suggestions for names, feel free to feel free to throw those down in the comments. I will definitely take a look at them. So here we go. We are gonna we're gonna take this guy up. Let's check our staging. Ba -ba 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 -ba. That all looks good. Ugh. Vehicle assembly building can't support things over thirty or over 30 pieces. Alright, maybe we upgrade our vehicle assembly building then, huh? How's that sound? We get 600,000 bucks. It's 200,000. Yeah, we upgrade it. Kerbnik. Launch the vessel. So I think uh, if I can figure out how to do it, I'm going to go ahead and fast time you guys through this launch since you've seen a couple of launches already and this one shouldn't be too interesting. If it ends up being interesting, then <laughs> Maybe I'll show you the whole thing, but either way, here we go. Yeah, so that did not kind of launch off as fast as I would have liked for the 1.5. And you know what? I forgot to put... I forgot to put a... Uh, got to put an engineer on this thing. We definitely want one of those. I don't want to revert to launch. I want to revert to the vehicle assembly building. Yeah, I totally forgot to put an engineer on this thing. Uh, we don't need it really on this last stage a whole lot. But you know what, we want that terrain altitude. So I am going to put it on there. So yeah, that does have a mass, but it's it's pretty minuscule. So we'll just kind of throw it on one side. There we go. Take two. All right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. Get this thing open, get that thing over there. If that ain't enough numbers for you guys, I don't know what is. Move him down to there. All right, let's rock it. So we are just going to accelerate this rocket launch here because we've seen a couple of those, and there's nothing too terribly interesting that happens on this one. So uh, we will jump back in once we get into a high suborbit, and it'll be time to collect some of the first science of this mission. So here we go. just have the engine itself right now. Or there's no alternator, so it's not generating electricity. The only thing generating our electricity right now is those. 
All right, so we're going to go back in and speed up the rest of this real quick. Uh, do note that I have to point the nose up a little bit to keep us from falling back. Uh, that's just because we didn't do a perfectly optimal orbit insertion. But uh, all right, time to go back and be in orbit. And that should be our orbit, guys. All right, so we are in orbit. Now these things are saying we have these scans to do, but if you see if I click on one, it says that it's uh, no more value for transmitting. So we've, we've transmitted as much as we can get out of those. So although there is some science to be had here, we'd need to recover it for it to be worth anything. And we're not recovering this vessel. So not gonna bother with that. So let's uh, set the moon as our target. Let's see, we're gonna do the encounter somewhere around here. And we'll make sure we do it better than last time, where I kind of played with it the wrong way. Right, we'll focus our view in on this. Let's grab that node. We can uh, take some speed off of it. There we go. That'll give us a nice encounter. For a mere 850 meters per second of delta V. And we've got... Get rid of the surface. We've got... Uh, 1,600 left in the transfer stage, and 2,200 still in the, quote, landing stage. So we're going we're gonna to be pretty, looking pretty good on Delta V for this. What are you trying to tell me? Stop that. Alright, that's getting old and fast. That's getting old real fast. So we need this thing to not... I wanted to stop kicking me out of time warp. Okay, so if we close it, then it doesn't do that. Which is good, because I think we've gathered about all the science that this ship can get from this uh, low, low carbon environment. We're going to rotate ourselves to point to our maneuver node, which will take just a hot second here. Do a little physics, physics warp here. And get us pointed at this guy. And there we go, that's pretty close. Burn's going to take a minute 20, it thinks, so we'll start at, you know, 40 seconds or so early. There we go. We're off. Up, up, and away. significantly overshot. So, now we'll have to turn around. If I put RCS on this, we could just, you know, fire the RCS backwards a little bit, and it would fix our problem, but I didn't. So, we gotta do it the old-fashioned way. Save with that, and 
and get ourselves out there. connection right now because we've got those two big antennas on there. And I'm just going to tell it to warp to there. And you see this time we're not hitting it on the uh, return part of our trajectory so this was a much more efficient way to encounter the moon than our last one was. Alright, so we are going to little bit radial here just to bring our bring our uh, periaps a little closer to the moon. We've still got 800 some meters per second of delta V in this stage so we're gonna be pretty set on that. Looks like we've already got that. Yeah, we do want to do this mystery goo though. Goo feels right at him and we're not gonna get anything for transmitting that so we're not gonna do it then. So we'll just bring that down a little bit to 20 or so. That should be fine. Now we'll pull ourselves into an orbit. This shouldn't be too terribly difficult to do. But what I, here's a little trick. Since we have such a slow turning craft right now, I'm just going to do that. And this will show me where on the nav ball our uh, vector is going to be. And our yaw is doing this weird thing here where it's uh, wanting to stick to one side for some reason. And I don't know what's up with that. Not sure why it's doing that. I, I think I remember once finding a way to get it to not do that. What if we... Hibernate, hibernate. Well, that no, that doesn't fix it. So it's something wrong with this, uh, with the controls. So I think what we're gonna do is quick save, quick load. We'll just kind of load back and see. Oh no, it's still doing it. That is really weird. Really, really weird. So let's just turn it. Can't turn this reaction wheels off. Very odd. Very, very odd. That's going to get extremely frustrating if it doesn't stop doing that. small. Okay. So we just want to throw all up. We're just trying to kind of bring ourselves to a normal moment a little bit here. So our Apple Apps is still very high, as you can see up there, 600 soon. We're going to bring it down to a more manageable level. Without lowering that one too much. Alright, so we actually could probably just go straight for a landing here. We can just land right around here. See, when I turn that off, it just, the torque just goes nuts. Very weird. Very weird. So I think we're just going to go ahead and go for a landing here. We're just going to jump right in here. What do you got for me? Mystery goo. Is it worth anything? Not worth anything. So we are just going to kill. 
kill our horizontal speed here. This stage should run out of fuel really soon. We'll definitely burn it up on the landing. That gives us a nice little... Nice little trajectory to worry about. We do want to bring up the surface guy. We actually get rid of orbit for now. We need the control. Let's see, what are we at our, uh, what's our terrain altitude? 7,000 meters. That's not too bad. for this size of vehicle. Where are we at now? 2,000 meters? Uh, oh, that's way down a little bit, I guess. You know. There we go. Now we're only going 50 meters per second. Uh, let's see if we can get our impact position. 3.8 degrees is not too bad. 1,500 meters from the surface. We might actually be able to take this guy on a little hopping since we've got the two goo canisters and haven't needed to use one yet. I think we'll be able to hop with it. Doing that 300 meters off the ground. So we're just trying to balance that retrograde vector in the... Uh, on the zero. We don't want to touch down that fast, but we also waste a lot of fuel if we make it take a long time to get to the ground. So here we are, we're about four meters per second. We're going very slow, two meters per second. Yaw still just wants to sit all the way to one side. I'm not sure what that's all about. You know, and I think it's it's got something to do with uh Yeah, I must have held Alt and then the D key or something. It's like adjusting the trim if you're on an aircraft. If you hold Alt while you're hitting the the movement keys, it'll it'll mess with them. We don't want that at all. So there we go. That fixed it. I knew I'd remember eventually what it was. So let's go ahead and transmit our temperature scan. Let's grab an atmospheric pressure scan. Transmit that. And just like that, we got both of those. And you know what, I forgot to get the stuff in uh, <laughs> in orbit of the, or in space near the moon, but that's all right, because we're going to probably do a hop. Do we have enough power to transmit this? Let's, let's just keep it for the moment. Temperature scan again wouldn't be worth anything from here. So let's see, we're we're in this biome here. Uh, if we get up to here, that'll be a different biome. Because right now we're in uh, the East Crater, and this will be not the East Crater. So we're gonna go like a little north, northeast, east-ish. Let's go ahead and turn on the SAS. East-ish. Yeah, and that's, that's developing in the right direction that I want. And we'll just send it off into the Midlands a little bit. <clears throat> and that can, you know, that could be something to do while... while this guy's regenerating. And while it's doing that, let's go ahead and just log our temperature, because that's only 8 minutes, and transmit it, even though we don't need to right now. That'll satisfy the other contract. So now we're really gonna have to let our electricity regenerate or we're gonna be in trouble. So now we're gonna do the landing basically exactly the way that we did it before. Um, we're, gonna, we're just gonna do it again. 
So we're just doing a little biome hopping is what this is called. Or that's what people like to call it anyways. So we're well within the biome we need to be in. So I'm going to go ahead and start killing our speed off a little bit. And make sure we're on surface speed. The only difference is the orbital speed takes into account the uh, movement of the planet. Or it gives you credit for the rotation of the planet. We don't want that. We want to uh, see our speed relative to the surface of the planet, not relative to space around the planet. If that makes sense. We'll go ahead and do that. Our terrain altitude is 8,000 meters. So we'll drop some, some altitude here a little bit. There we go. Now we're about 3 kilometers up. Get a little bit of the speed. This here extra speed that we've got. Shouldn't be too bad. We're now one and a half kilometers up, going 50 meters per second. That's not bad. And we just got tons of fuel. There's 1,500 meters per second of fuel left. When you're not planning on coming back, it's, <laughs> it's pretty nice on your fuel. I mean, we actually could get this thing back to Kerbin with that amount of fuel, but it doesn't have any parachutes or anything, so there wouldn't be really much point to that. You can't take a surface sample to give us, or you can't plant the flag or anything anyway, so... Yeah, we best slow down before we run into the ground. There we go, we're about 5 meters per second. This place is a 6 degree incline, so it's a little more inclined than the last one was, but it should be alright. This is a small, light little probe. It shouldn't have too much trouble landing, uh, regardless of what kind of area we're on. Let's roll ourselves a little bit to match that. Right, look, look at it, it's just, just, just floating there at just such a slow speed, one meter per second. I mean, this is obviously not the most efficient way to land, but it works, don't it? Alright. That's our second biome. I'll go ahead and transmit our temperature data from there. We'll grab an atmospheric pressure scan. We're going to want to send this as well, but we'll let the batteries regenerate some. Let's do a little regular time warp here. That's probably enough for those. Uh, not enough, so it's only at 83%. So let's see, let's uh, long pressure data. There. So we'll let our electricity get over 80 this time. There we go, that should be enough. Boop -a -doop -a -doo. There we go. Got that. Mystery goo. We got another mystery goo to send. I don't remember if we actually sent the other mystery goo. I don't think we did because we didn't have enough power at the time. Really should have put more solar panels on this. Although we put six of them on here. Should have just put a bigger battery on. That's what I should have done. Alright, transmit this nonsense. There we go. And I don't know. Review data. Yeah, we're going to have to transmit this one. Let's let the power get up again. So I'm just fast forwarding time a little bit so that we don't have to sit here for like five minutes and watch watch power get generated. All right, and that I think will be good for this mission for now because this thing's not gonna get us any more transmit data. So we're going to go back to the Space Center now. We made a little bit of science and any future contracts we get for science data on the surface of the moon, it's gonna be super quick because we'll just pop into the tracking center Say we want to fly that ship, and uh, we'll be good to go. We can transmit it. It won't get us any more science, but we'll be able to finish those contracts. And we're at 200-some science again. So, let's see. Let's definitely get uh, the fuel lines. We're also going to want some bigger engines, because when is that ever a bad thing? So, actually, I think I'm going to get this and heavy rocketry. We can put off the fuel lines for a little bit. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and take a break there, and uh, I will see you guys in the next episode. Uh, thanks for tuning in.